What's up internet, my name is Michael Cook, this is Blue Giant Media, and we're here to connect through gaming. Today we're going to take a look at What Goes Up Must Come Down, the expansion for The Seventh Continent by Bruno Sauter and Ludovic Rowdy, published by Sirius Pulp. We're also going to take a look at all of the smaller expansions that you can possibly get from The Seventh Continent. We're going to open all of it up, we're going to make sure that it's spoiler free, and then we're going to go ahead and put everything back into the base box, and probably this box as well for overflow. We're going to see kind of how much there is all told, and then uh, overall just kind of what you're going to get for your money. Alright, so for those of you who don't know, The Seventh Continent is a game where you are going to be exploring this Seventh Continent, which you have visited before, and you have somehow mysteriously been pulled back to, and you're going to be trying to lift whatever curse it is that has brought you back to this continent. This was a Kickstarter and Kickstarter only game, which has done very well for itself and is pretty difficult to come by. I really, really, really have enjoyed the base game, so I've been very excited to get more content because I did not get any of the expansions with my core set that I got quite a while ago. So I've been really eagerly awaiting the chance to play many more different curses that you can get. So here we have stuff for your hot air balloon, which you can make a couple of different ways, it looks like. I guess these are for if you don't have or don't want to use these nifty little plastic. Let's see if it is taped together. All right, so you could use this raft and put your standees in, or you could use this little piece right here and set your, your standees instead of your minis on top of it and move it along with it. I think the vast majority of people are going to choose to use these. And for the hot air balloon, you can put it together and actually it looks like you are going to have to, I see. So this actually comes apart to snap around. So you can go like this and like this. And now you have your hot air balloon to move around. Pretty nifty. All right. There we go. That's pretty nice. So, so far everything is punching out pretty nice here. These are uh, to make a discard tray if you so choose to hold the cards that you are discarding. All right. So you would place this in there with these on either side and it makes a spot for you to stack the cards. Just gives a little bit of a different table presence. You got this nice, really nice leather binder here, which is intended to be able to put cards in here as you save between games. So you can put things in here like um, specific cards or decks that belong to certain players or different things that have been discarded and all kinds of stuff. Be interesting to see how useful that actually is, but it is nice regardless. So there's all these different dividers to sort these cards, but this is interesting because when your hot air balloon lands and you depart from that area, the hot air balloon stays where it is. So it says right here that you're going to put the map tile or map card from where you left the balloon back here. So when you do have to retrieve it, you know that's where the hot air balloon is. So you can kind of go back to that spot and retrieve your hot air balloon from where you left it. So you actually have to keep track of where it is. Okay, we've got some more dividers. All right, this be interesting. Here is the rule book. 
for the expansion. Pretty good quality paper, feels like. Good thickness, has a good feel, good texture. Not a whole lot of added rules, so it's just that small sheet. And then let's see what we have here. This adventure is what, and what an adventure it has, be, and it has, it has been, is over for us. But for you, it has only just begun. So this is from the, uh, let's see, we're looking forward to rest, and we pray that the fruits of your long labors. So it's from the designers, and it basically just says thank you for backing. That's nice. All right, so this is not the only thing that I got. I will unwrap these cards in just a little bit, but I want to go into some of the other things that we got, because I also have this Rookie Slash Survivor Gameplay Bundle, which is just a pack with all the different expansion curses. So, in here, we have eight separate curses. There's these, and these, and these. So now we're going to go ahead and unwrap all of these. All right, so here I have Fear of the Devourers. And this, you're going to get some of these minis that are devourers. I believe they start as babies and they grow up, and you have to kind of deal with them. Otherwise, they get worse and worse. So here's a little mini rule book <laughs> that kind of summarizes what changes. And you've got a bunch of different cards. So this does not add a quest. Uh, it just adds some different locations and some different events and things that can happen related to the devourers, mostly that have to do with when you're different places that they might pop up while you're exploring. So that is that expansion. There we go. <clears throat> Next, we'll look at Facing the Elements. In this, we have some of these clear uh, pedestals and stands, which go with some different uh, elemental you know, storms of different kinds, maybe fog, lightning, blizzard. So different types of elements that can pop up while you're exploring. And looks like they, you know, maybe they can, I'm not sure, I haven't read the rule book yet, but I believe that they can be they could be on a tile while you move around, and they also might move from location to location, possibly. I don't know. I haven't read the rulebook yet, but I think that would be interesting if that is what happens. Either way, these are different types of elements that you may end up having to deal with if you are using this expansion. This expansion also has just a little guide that tells you how it's going to work, and there are different events that can have them come out, the different storms come out, as well as some alternate location cards for different places that end up having maybe you know, storms that you have to weather before you can move on you know, and clear that location and move on to explore it more thoroughly. Okay. Then we have the flying roots. This one goes with what goes up must come down. So you have these kind of balloon type plants that might that you might encounter while up in the air balloon. Again, small little summary of what changes and some cards that talk about you, know, you might be able to find the different pieces, harvest items from them. They might have uh, most of these are going to be things that you encounter it, you do something and then it gets going to get replaced by another card something along those lines and over here we have again some different uh, exploration type events that could crop up as you explore the island as well as looks like some different action cards that can get or maybe items that you can get so that is fear I'm sorry not fear the devourers this is the flying roots okay Next, we'll look at the Swamp of Madness. Again, small little rule. And so these three, neither one of them uh, include a curse. This one includes a curse that you can play, giving you more things that you can do, more places that you can go. This one actually expands the size of the map, from what I can tell. 
So you've got a pretty good sized amount of cards. Far more cards in this than you have in either of these three. And you have a whole bunch of different stuff that you can encounter. Really wide array of things. A wide array of locations, wide array of uh, all kinds of stuff. But primarily a bunch of locations. There are some different uh, skill cards or items that you may end up acquiring. But quite a bit of content in these, even though they are smaller boxes. These, uh, these look like they have a pretty good amount of map variability or map expansion to them. This one looks to be similar. It's got some exploration stuff, different location type events, locations you might end up going. Also, a quest. More different locations, puzzles. And the artwork on all these, I mean, the world is so immersive. I've, I can't wait to explore all these, and I don't know if I'll ever really be able to explore and finish all these quests, because there's so much. It's pretty phenomenal. Oh, this one's got a lot of different things that you can visit, too. So this is the Icy Maze. The Icy Maze looks like it has Area 10. A lot to do with that, so it must expand that particular area of the map a lot with this quest that must have to do a lot with what is over there in the icy maze. Bunch of, okay, so it looks like you're gonna be navigating some of the Arctic type ocean, looking for different islands and stuff in the middle of the ocean. It'd be pretty interesting. All right, then we've got the Path of Repentance. From what I understand from this, it gives you something that you can kind of use within other games too. So it's gonna, this one crops up fairly frequently from what I understand, but also this one does not come with a curse for you to do. So only these three add curses from what I can tell so far. Uh, this will go with Forbidden Sanctuary. All right, here is the Comfort Creatures, which is going to give you some little buddies, you know, basically just different animals that you can end up encountering in different ways, and those animals could possibly come and be your buddies, which there were a few of those in the base set, but this just kind of adds to that. It gives you a way to get eggs, and those eggs, you can take care of them, they can hatch. So, some a pretty good amount of content between all of these, I have to say. There's there's a lot of extra cards between all these expansions. I mean, there's in all of these expansions, there's probably as much as there is in this expansion, if not more. So definitely looking forward to that. So now what I'm going to do, uh, and one thing that, the, that Sirius Pulp did is in the base set, they had some printing issues that led to cards having a little bit different coloring on them in some instances. Uh, I didn't notice it too much, but some of the card backs were not perfectly matched. And I think it was most egregious, from what I understand, with the base action cards and the, exp and the ones that you could earn. So between the regular skill cards and the advanced skill cards, there's some that are a little bit different color, and some people found that it was possibly too easy to identify which ones were which, which could definitely be problematic. If you're looking at what's coming up next, you don't want to be able to have any kind of a hint. So they went to the trouble of reprinting the entire set of cards from the base set giving everybody essentially a brand new copy of the game, <laughs> which is incredible customer service in my opinion. Rather than wait for people to put in requests or complaints or let them know exactly which cards, they just said, you know what, forget it. Every single person who has this game is going to get a complete new copy of it to make sure that all of their cards match. That's, that is really impressive to me. I'm very impressed with that the fact that, at the fact that they did that. So, all right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut away, I'm gonna open this up, I'm going to sleeve <laughs> all of these cards, and I'm going to put them into the box and show you kind of how I am going to figure out how to fit everything 
into these boxes. All right, so after several attempts, here is everything all sleeved. I ended up having to get some different card sleeves because the ones that came with, I think they were 90 microns thick and sleeving everything meant that everything was about this tight in there and trying to get anything out was not really, <laughs> not very fun. So I ended up getting some, um, some other sleeves that were 40 microns thick and that made it so now I can kind of go through and find things um, you know, much, much easier. So what I did for the cards that have more than one of them, so any of them that might end up being shuffled, especially the, <laughs> the action cards, those are the ones that I put the thicker sleeves on and everything else I put the thinner sleeves on. So like these ones right here, these have the thicker sleeves these have the thicker sleeves. Um, the 50s, because there's a bunch of those, have thicker sleeves. But the ones that there's a whole bunch of them, like these 99, there's only one of them. So that one does not get an extra thick sleeve, just the ones that have extras. And what I also ended up doing was alternating. <laughs> I know this is probably ridiculous and no one else is probably going to bother doing this, but I went ahead and I took each number and alternated whether they were going from left to right or right to left so that the thicker part at the bottom alternated sides <laughs> the whole way through because that made it a little bit easier to flip through everything. So I went through and like, let's see here, for instance, the um, 248 here sleeved from the left, the 249 is sleeved from the right. I did that the whole way through because I found that it gave me an extra quarter inch or so per row, which just made flipping through things that much easier. So I've got all of the different uh, adventure type exploration cards, like, yeah, exploration cards here. I've got my preparation storage, all my curses and everything all the starting basic skills, all the advanced skills, the character specific skills and character cards, and then everything in numerical order all the way through 250 in this box, and then everything from uh, 250 all the way through to the end in this box, and this is also where I have the banished cards. So that ends up filling up. I played through this once with the Forbidden Sanctuary, and that I ended up exploring the entire island a little bit extra because I hadn't played the game in about a year and I didn't remember where things were and I just felt like exploring because that's half the fun of the game. But it ended up filling up this row pretty decently. But everything else worked really well. Over here I have all the devourers and the uh, flying roots. I have all of the dice, the character tokens, and all the different little minis are all over here. That's what I have in this box. And then I went ahead, I'm gonna put the rule book on top there. And then go like this, go like that, go like this, and like that. That looks pretty good. Then over here, uh, I have in my journal, I put, I put the original, just a basic satchel and journal card, the pocket watch, which you use um, to start any mission or any curse that has the path to repentance. So I have those in here along with, well, that's pretty much it. The things that I might pull out frequently, I guess. That's what I've got in here. And then over here I have the base for the balloon, the ra uh, raft, I have the weather stands, uh, and I have the extra character clips and stuff like that, the standees that I'm not really going to be using. So I just got them stowed there. Unfortunately, there's not really a better way to store the uh, satchel and journal card than, or <laughs> binder, other than kind of like that, which is a little bit of a bummer. I wish it, you know, I had a little bit of a better situation for it, but what I basically do is try and position these so that they are laying as flat as possible so that they sit just a little bit lower and then I will put this on top so that it doesn't press down too hard into it. All right. And everything fits in there nice and tidy now. Unfortunately, it fits in two boxes. I wish it was all in one, but there we go. Mm -hmm.
Alright, so that's what's inside the box of What Goes Up Must Come Down, the expansion for Seventh Continent, published by Sirius Pulp and designed by Ludovic Rowdy and Bruno Sauter. If you want to know more about the Seventh Continent, including kind of my overall thoughts on some of the curses and the gameplay, uh, spoiler free again, <laughs> you can go ahead and take a look link for links in the description section if you want to get those posted. And you can also find a link there to macronovagames.com where you can buy, for a limited time, some of the stuff for Seventh Continent, as well as a whole bunch of other great games. Until next time, I want to thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like what you see. Let me know in the comments section if you have any recommendations or questions for me. And as always, have a wonderful day.